What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Rebuilding the Washington Redskins. We've got episode three here. This episode is going to be our offseason. A quick reminder, please do hit that like button if you're enjoying the series. Also, make sure you comment below your thoughts. I try to see every comment, so definitely leave those below. Uh, so we are coming off a really exciting close to our first season. We put Dwayne Haskins in uh, and really kind of mustered up a lot of momentum and made this an interesting team heading into next season. You got optimism, of course, around the young quarterback, Dwayne Haskins, and how he played. But Bryce Love emerging as a potential star running back down the road. We will be getting Darius Geis back. We were able to convince Trent Williams, the star left tackle, to come back and play for us after holding out. We, of course, have Terry McLaurin, the, the star young wide receiver on the rise here. So a lot of pieces on the offense. The defense actually played really well, especially down the stretch. Uh, no true star pass rushers, but these linebackers, Cole Holcomb, but specifically Sean Dion Hamilton played really well. Uh, and Cole Holcomb played well, given the fact that he wasn't even a full-time starter here. And you can see just his stats were off the charts. Uh, and then for the interceptions, nothing crazy. But we've got a really nice culture building here, like we've kind of echoed. A lot of Alabama guys, a lot of local Virginia, Carolina guys, people that want to be here and establish something special here. And the next step in that is going to be picking a new head coach. So we're going to kind of run through our candidates here. Uh, just kind of talking out loud. So the, the number one name that's going to be thrown out there is Lincoln Riley of the Oklahoma Sooners. Personally, I think it would take a Andy Reid retiring, the opportunity to coach a Patrick Mahomes, something like that to get him to leave Oklahoma. So he's off the table in my opinion. You know, it's an attractive job, but you do still have Dan Schneider here, the owner is uh, kind of well known to be a, a bit of a hard guy to work for. So you do have some diminishing returns there, but we do have a young quarter, uh, quarterback and a pretty good defense in place, so it is still an attractive spot. You could go the retread route with a guy like a Mike McCarthy. Personally, I think we would be able to convince a, a higher end prospect coach than that. You could go the defensive coordinator route, which is more of a dying breed lately. The, the trend in the NFL nowadays is the offensive coordinator to become your head coach. You know, if we were going to go defense, I would think maybe Robert Sala, the defense coordinator for the San Francisco 49ers. But I think the guy we are going to go with is Chiefs offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy. This is a guy that has spent a lot of time under uh, a great offense coordinator, one of the best, if not the best, Andy Reid. And then as far as the defense is concerned, you know, this defense actually played pretty well down the stretch. I think I'm going to maintain the continuity here. We're going to keep Greg Minuski around as the defense coordinator. I know he's been here for a long time, but I like that we have some familiarity there. I, I think we had a lot of momentum going on that defensive side of the ball. I like the culture we have going there. So we're actually going to stick with the same scheme, the same coaching on the defensive side of the ball, but we are going to bring in uh, some new minds on the offensive side of the ball, starting with new head coach Eric Bieniemy. So a peek at the playoff matchups here. Lions-Cardinals, uh, a matchup from the Week 1 matchup that resulted in a tie. Obviously not in this because I can't force a tie. Patriots-Browns, Seahawks-Cowboys, Ravens-Texans. Let's just take a peek at the standings. Interesting to see how everything played out because we did start with my personal, uh, sorry, with the real life standings. So Chiefs, Bills, Patriots, Texans, Browns, Ravens. So the Browns have a crazy bounce back after their awful start. And they actually go nine and seven and make the playoffs. And then in the NFC, Packers 12 and four, Saints, uh, the Cardinals must have ripped off a huge winning streak, which is crazy. Uh, because they were 3-3, three and three, and they maybe won the Week 1 game against the Lions. Um, but uh, definitely a different playoff picture than you would think. The, the Niners don't make it, the Rams don't make it, the Vikings fell off a cliff. Uh, interesting uh, close to the season. I doubt that's how it's going to play out in real life. So we're going to go ahead and simulate through the playoffs here. We do have a bunch of upgrades. We'll do the ones that matter here. Jonathan Allen. Dunbar, Bostic, Flowers, definitely want to do Hamilton, but the rest of these guys we will automate. A 
two overall boost for Hamilton who had a couple really big upgrades already and another good one agility two zone he's gonna be our number one linebacker heading into next year depending on how the draft goes take a peek at the Pro Bowl roster Josh Allen makes it Jacoby Brissett makes the Pro Bowl any other surprises Cole Beasley Adam Humphreys the slot guys that's pretty normal for Madden um, the offensive line, no big surprises. More people, a lot of people like these more than others, but we'll definitely scroll through. Brandon Copeland for the Jets makes it. I'm not seeing a whole lot of guys for us. Quentin Dunbar actually made the Pro Bowl. Did we have, okay, Ryan Kerrigan. I lied, we had a few. Any on the offensive side of the ball for us? I, I was used to looking at the AFC side from our last rebuild. Uh, nope. No one really for us. Landon Collins. A lot of defensive guys. Like I said, this defense has some players. So hopefully getting some Pro Bowl upgrades there. Let's go to the Super Bowl week. Chiefs-Cowboys. That's a classic battle for the Super Bowl. Mitch Trubisky won NFL MVP. All right. 7-9 uh, and nine record for the Bears. Not exactly sure how that worked. Uh, Coach of the year was Sean McDermott. Let's see, any awards for us? Dwayne Haskins was second for Offensive Rookie behind Kyler Murray. Cole Holcomb finished second in Defensive Rookie of the Year voting, and he didn't even play the whole year, so definitely a guy to keep an eye on. we got two good young linebackers. I feel like we should give them a chance. And maybe Holcomb is worthy of a little bit of a, a player review style, a little TFGO League style postseason player review where we give him a little boost that the game didn't give him. So on to the offseason, and the Cowboys win the Super Bowl. So Dak Prescott, Jason Garrett getting theirs. And Landon Collins goes up to Superstar X Factor. I'm actually all right with that boost because he was a Pro Bowler. He gets the selfless trait, which is really interesting. It uh, helps other guys get in the zone faster, which is pretty cool, although we don't have any X Factors on the defensive side of the ball. And I did forget, we actually get Reuben Foster back, so that's going to muddy up this linebacker room. Um, but we're definitely pretty satisfied with what we have there in that linebacker room. That's going to help this defense a lot next year. Corner definitely going to be a big need for us in the offseason, probably our number one need, as I'm just kind of scrolling through the roster there to see what our biggest needs are going to be. So let's take a peek at our re-signings. Chuck Clark came in here, played pretty well. I'm going to offer him a contract, a three-year deal. We are going to lowball him a little bit uh, just because I, I want to make sure we can have some flexibility with our cap. So he's going to come back on a three-year, about $4 million contract. That's a good deal. Uh, Sills, he's asking for a lot, but I think we can get him for much cheaper than that. Let's get him on a two-year kind of league minimum salary here. And he's going to stick around... Bucky Hodges, we'll let him walk. Trayvon Hester, I'd like to keep him around if he's willing to go cheap. He's going to test out free agency. Flowers wants to hit the market. I think we're going to let him. Tim Williams, who we stole from the Packers practice squad. Let's see if he'll go cheap. He wants to play for a new team next year. All right, how about Cameron Sutton? He's a guy I can see starting in the slot for us. He also wants to test out free agency. So we're going to have some guys walking, but that's fine. We expect some turnover here with a new coach. And we might be able to get these guys back in free agency as well. we got about $36 million in cap space. We might have some cuts that we could make. Some big names do hit the market here. Devin McCourty, definitely tempting. Free safety, a big need for us. I'm um, looking at guard, edge rusher, corner for sure. Pretty decent uh, offseason wave of free agents here. Arik Armstead, he'd be an interesting fit in our 3-4 scheme as that defensive end. But we actually are pretty set at that position. Pretty healthy chunk of free agents here. One thing that is pretty unfortunate is that Alex Smith 
is a massive cap penalty if we were to release him. I think it's best to just keep him around as our backup quarterback, uh, kind of as a mentor for Haskins. I, I think at this point, he, he's trying to have that, that comeback. He's only 61 overall, but you know, I, I he's pretty good for a backup quarterback if anything did happen to Haskins. And cutting him is not going to do us much in terms of freeing up cap space. I'm just kind of scrolling through to see if there's anything we can do to clear up some space. I, I don't think so. Kerrigan did regress pretty hard. Uh, he's a free cap hit. We could probably get him back, but use that money to potentially upgrade with a guy like, a, I don't know, a Fowler or a Yannick Ngakwe. So I'm actually going to release Ryan Kerrigan, and that's a situation where we might bring him back. We might try to get him back, but that cap hit was too much. Josh Norman, another guy, like, we could think about moving him to free safety. He actually lost his one ability because he regressed under the 80 overall mark. Um, but again, a guy that with that cap hit, we can save $13 million in space by releasing him. And again, maybe a guy we bring back as a safety, but not under this contract. So we're going to release him. And that's actually going to give us some pretty good flexibility with free agency now. So Devin McCourty only wants a one-year deal. He's a guy with plenty of rings. I don't think he's going to mind uh, kind of coming here for a ton of money on a leadership role. So we're going to overpay for Devin McCourty. We're going to give him actually uh, close to, actually, let's just give him $13 million per year uh, to really convince him to come here. Stay on the East Coast. He probably doesn't even have to move his family. And I would love to pair him with a big cornerback signing. Ronald Darby, really the only guy on the market. Jonathan Jones, a corner that uh, plays uh, next to him in that New England secondary. Or we could sign his brother, Jason. But he's kind of slowing down a little bit. Darby's asking for a lot, but I think we can actually afford it. We've got the rookie quarterback on that cheap contract, so I'm actually going to pay up to try and get Ronald Darby in here going to cost us about 12 and a half per season. We are the favorites right now, but beefing up that secondary would really help. I am going to give another offer to Ryan Kerrigan, but it's not going to be <laughs> as much as he might like. About $5 million per year. Certainly don't need any middle linebackers. We could still use some help on the edge. I don't know if Yannick Ngakwe is going to be worth the you know, $14 million asking price that he's looking for. I think we can uh, maybe get an edge guy in the draft. We do still have Montez Sweat, who we spent a first round pick on last year. So uh, the last place I want to look at is wide receiver and offensive line. I don't see a ton of excellent options here. I'm going to reward Trey Quinn and give him at least a decent opportunity to, to win that slot wide receiver job. And then on the offensive line, we do need guard help. I think I'm going to go a little more of a bargain here. Instead of really paying up for a Thune or a White Hair, I'm going to go for Andrew Wiley, who did play for Eric Bieniemy here uh, in Kansas City. So two-year, $5 million offer for him. So I, I'm pretty happy with this wave. It's going to save some money for next year as well. Let's see what happens. Darn, we missed out on Darby. We did get Devin McCourty to come in here, so I do like that. But we're definitely going to need to spend some money on a corner. The Giants have come in on Ryan Kerrigan. Andrew Wiley, his price is rising. And I'm going to keep going. I like the idea of bringing him in here. He's only 26 years old. Put him with Enemy, who he's familiar with. I'm going to let the Giants have Ryan Kerrigan. I'm ready to let him go. Especially if he wants a two-year contract. If the Giants are going to give him that, let's, let's let him go. I don't want to get tied down as he continues to regress. I'd rather... Uh, get younger and faster at that position. I am going to try and sign Jordan Jenkins just as a guy who can play there for a year just to add some depth on the edge, but a harmless one-year contract. I think he'll be somewhat interested in that. And then as far as the corners are concerned, Norman's not getting any offers, so let's let's at least offer him a contract. About a five-year or a five million dollar contract for a year. And Trey Wayne's only wants a one-year deal. So let's go ahead and kind of use him as a band-aid. We missed out on Darby, but we don't want to overpay for a guy like Jonathan Jones and get sucked into a contract that we might not want. So we're going to go with Trey Wayne's there. Hopefully he accepts that. All right, let's go ahead to next week. Oh, we miss out on Andrew Wiley and the other guy's not really interested. So 
So far, our free agent pull to get guys to come here to Washington has not been too strong. We are no longer the top offer on Jordan Jenkins. I mean, good for you. If you're getting that offer, you can go ahead. I'm going to try some low ball one year deals here just to, you know, maybe add to some talent here. Robert Foster not getting any offers, so maybe we can get him around here on a two year, pretty cheap contract. Let's just try it. My guy Alex Erickson not getting any offers. Uh, he ends up a free agent. Let go from Cincinnati. Let's let's uh, send him a little offer. He could start in the slot for us, to be honest. I don't know if these guys are going to take these offers, but it's worth a shot. We definitely need more uh, tight end depth. Looks like Vernon Davis retired. Another Virginia guy here, Mo Ali Cox. We're going to give him a two-year offer. Hopefully he takes it. These guys really are not interested in coming to Washington, to be honest. Offensive line options are kind of run dry there. We might have to play the... Uh, Alabama guy, uh, Ross Pierschbacher at guard if we can't draft a guy. It's unfortunate how that played out. I thought we were going to be able to jump in and get Wiley, but uh, he just was not interested in reuniting with Eric Bieniemy. Could use a little bit of depth on the inside. I'm going to give Tyler Lancaster an offer. Trayvon Hester is a guy that we had to let go. He only wants a one-year deal. We got the cap space. He's being a little stubborn here, but he's a talented player. I don't actually mind paying up Maybe he plays up to it, maybe he doesn't. But uh, I would like to keep him around, especially if we, he's only wants the one-year deal and uh, we've got the space for it. And then the last thing we're going to do here is Jason McCourty. Why not just send him a one-year deal, reunite the McCourty twins? He might not play a lot, but if he still wants to play, why not reunite with his brother? All right, here we go. Heading towards the draft. All right, that's more like it. We added some depth. We got a number two corner. Dunbar is going to have to be our number one. We do still have Josh Norman, Jason McCourty. They're going to give us some flexibility uh, with the secondary. They can probably play safety or corner. We do get Trayvon Hester in here and Tyler Lancaster. So we're going to go ahead to the draft. And let's start drafting. So we pick eighth. The Bengals get the first pick. Let's, uh, let's just sim along, see how this goes. So the first pick is Jake Fromm to replace Andy Dalton in Cincinnati all right and it's gonna be Chase Young to the Dolphins I agree with those two picks right there a defensive lineman for the Broncos I don't think we would have a lot of interest in trading up I think more picks is gonna be a good thing for this team we need as much talent to build around Dwayne Haskins as possible so we're gonna just keep simming along Grant Delpit goes to the Redskins that's actually fine we uh, you know probably are happy with that considering Landon Collins is our best player so the Giants are going to go with Jerry Judy. I was kind of hoping he would fall to us, get that Alabama product in there uh, to help out our receiver. But there's other options at wide receiver in this class if we cho choose to go that route. The Jets take a tackle. The Titans take Tua. Again, I think that happened in our other ones. So they're going to replace one Hawaiian with another. So that is going to give us some good selections here. Isaiah Simmons is available stud freak safety linebacker hybrid but not much of a scheme fit for us unfortunately i don't know if there's any line prospects that really fit uh the value here i'm actually considering trading down here hmm decisions decisions this is a big one for the future of this team uh, this organization tough decisions to make here Derek Brown, probably the highest player that'd be on my board at least, but we don't need defensive tackles. We've got a bunch of them. Let's take a peek at our offers here. And per usual, they're pretty garbage. But I am, I think, I'm going to target the Chargers. They have the 14th pick, Derek Brown on the board. I would think that that would be where they would go. Uh, this is a pretty realistic trade. I might even intervene to make this happen. Um, but give up third round pick to move up six spots and take Derek Brown. Uh, hoping I can execute it uh, if I take over the Chargers. Uh, I wish the offers on the table were more realistic. Usually you would at least get a first round pick along with a third or a fourth to move down. But just the Madden engine. We're going to have to do a little work around here. Let's see if it works. And it did. 
So let's see, are we allowed to make this trade now? We are, so we can manipulate things like that. I don't know, some people might not like that I do this, but I actually think that's very realistic as a Chargers team that really is only a piece or two away. They need offensive line help, but that interior defensive line is so bad there. Uh, and this is a really good player, Derek Brown, that we would love to have taken, but just not a need for us at all. So I don't think any Chargers fans would complain about that. That's a, a piece that they've really needed. And they're sitting there in the middle of the draft, a piece away. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and retire as the Chargers. And it crashed my game. So hopefully that's saved. And it did. We're good. All right. So next user pick. Eagles take a corner. No surprise there. All right. So a little more flexibility here at 14. The value's a little better. LaVisca Chenault, I know we took him in the Bills rebuild. He would be an excellent fit here, a physical player. Uh, but corner, is there any value here? You got Bryce Hall. If we wanted to stick with the Virginia route, you got Christian Fulton, really athletic, full-sized corner. He's kind of where I'm leaning right now. Trayvon Diggs, really athletic guy. If we want to stick with the Alabama route, we could go with a studly center in Tyler Biadaz. There's no pass rushers that I'm really thinking about at this spot. I do like Anthony Jennings, but this is a little high. Uh, so we are, I think, going to take Christian Fulton out of LSU. I know these guys are the culture fits, the uh, cohesiveness, but I think Christian Fulton's just a better player. So we're going to we're gonna roll the dice with him. And he is a 75 overall with hidden development. Really good athlete. I think that was the right pick. He's, he's looking like a stud. They said we reached, but I don't think so. Very happy with that pick. So we don't actually have a second round pick. I'm not sure when the Redskins got rid of that. Must have been in the trade up for Montez Sweat. So we're going to have to skip ahead here. So let's see. What wide receivers are still available? C.D. Lamb is available. Henry Ruggs is available. The Speedster, very tempting to go that route. But there is a Mauler at guard available, Solomon Kinley. That is where I'm most tempted to go right here. Could also go with a good pass rusher here in Curtis Weaver. Man, we're going to have a good pick here with that pick we got from the Chargers. But that guard spot is a big weakness. I like uh, what Solomon Kinley looks like here. We're going to take him. 66 overall. He does have normal development, but he is going to play for us. Uh, I think that's a good pick. Remember, 66 is actually pretty good for a rookie lineman uh, in Madden 20. So we're going to go ahead to our next pick. And I think Curtis Weaver is going to be the pick for us. Rugs, extremely tempting. We do already have that deep threat. Mm, people are going to be mad if I pass on Rugs again. I mean, the speed combination between him and Terry McLaurin. We do have Paul Richardson too, though. I just don't think it makes a lot of sense, as tempting as it is. I think getting that edge presence is going to be a better pick, and maybe Ruggs will be there with our next pick, but uh, we're going to do the smart thing here and go with a potentially really good pass rusher here. 68 overall. Uh, 79 finesse moves, though. Pretty good athlete. Not going to complain about that pick at all. We need a guy there, because we didn't get any free agents, and uh, Kerrigan's gone. So next user pick. Let's see if he's still there. If he is, we'll take him. And there he is. It pays off. Henry Ruggs in the fourth round. So he's got a hidden development, 95 speed. All right. We may have just found another steal in the mid rounds, just like Terry McLaurin the year before. Wow. Let's get this Chargers pick. So this draft's going well. Uh, can we find any more steals here? I feel like the best player on the board here is Richard Lawrence, 21 years old, out of LSU. Really good athlete, fallen here. Only a 58 overall. That's, uh, that's a bit of a whiff there. An athlete, but probably a guy that's not going to make the team. So first bad pick of the draft. I thought he'd be better than that. So seventh round here, trying to fish for a sleeper. Good amount of wide receivers still available. How about a potential slot guy or at worst a kick returner maybe? Ooh, 
Well, he is quick and fast. He can at least return kicks for us. He'll be a weapon. We got another pick coming up here. I'm going to take a swing at one of these undersized free safeties here. Maybe a slot corner, perhaps. There's a speedy little slot corner, Isaiah Rogers. Yeah, that'll work for a seventh round pick for sure. Adding some athleticism. All right, that's the class. We had some whiffs in the middle there, but I'm really happy with our first four rounds. So that's the off season. We're setting up for an exciting year too. Again, guys, please do hit that like button. We'll be back on Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern with episode four. Uh, so until then, peace.